Today we'll be looking at the various types of parrying which are described in Maya's side sword text. Now before I go any further, if you're not a side sworder, don't lose hope, because all of the parrying techniques I'm going to describe today also apply to longsword and dusak. When looking at parries, we can actually break things down into two chief parts. Firstly, the techniques of parrying themselves, and secondly, the principles around which our parrying is based. In this particular video, we're going to concentrate only on the techniques, and in later videos, we'll look at the principles. In his side sword text, Maya breaks down parrying techniques into eight distinctive types. Setting aside, barring, taking out with the short edge, slicing off, going through, suppressing, striking out with the hanging blade, and simple hanging. Obviously there's quite a lot to go through here, so in this particular video I'm only going to work through four individual parrying techniques. Setting aside, slicing off, going through, and suppressing. There are different variations on how you can perform these actions, so I'll be sticking to some fairly basic ones which have actually worked out quite well in live fencing. We've actually seen the first, setting aside or absetzen, in a previous video pertaining to longsword, but let's take a look at how Maya describes it in his side sword section. Looking at this from the side, it looks very similar to the same movement with longsword. The only slight difference is in the footwork and some of the mechanics. So let's add in our opposing fencer. Notice in this particular instance, the opponent is cutting in towards our head. We oppose his blade with our guard and long edge, and triangle step off to the side. We then turn this into a double triangle step, lunging slightly forward and completing the action with a high thrust. Let's look briefly at this initial hand movement in isolation. From the front, the movement is much clearer. We're lifting and pushing across our line in a linear fashion to oppose our opponent's blade. This linearity is important, because if at any stage we're intercepted along the way, we're still covering ourselves with our sword. It can be easy to fall into the habit of performing circular scooping actions for Absetzen. Notice how this leaves us in a considerably more dangerous position, both structurally and in terms of coverage of the line. Even if we perform the linear action correctly, there's still quite a small margin of error, particularly against linear attacks or very steep cuts. This is where the sideways movement comes into it. We're mitigating the risk by performing a triangle step off to the side, removing ourselves from the opponent's attacking line while simultaneously guarding with the strong. And of course it wouldn't be Absetzen if we weren't also offending with the point. When it comes to this offence, we also have to be wary of distance, because a simple turn off to the side may cause our point to fall short. We repair this by doubling the triangle step and lunging forward. So far we've used a high thrust in a kind of ox position, but we could also perform a straight thrust into long point, or even a thrust with our hand in opposition sideways. A final method of changing the distance management is one that you may have used yourself in fencing, and that's pivoting further around with the initial triangle step. This brings us closer to the opponent, and ends up with us not requiring the additional step, or if we do require further movement, we can simply move past our opponent in a continuous stepping action. The second class of pairing we're going to look at is slicing off. Slicing off once again begins at a low guard on the right. We simply lift our weapon and bring it down to our knee level in a slicing action. This is intended to displace the opponent's blade and bring it offline while keeping our own blade in presence. Let's examine more closely. The opponent launches their attack by thrusting straight towards us. We lift our hand and bring it down in a slicing action over the top of their sword. This displaces their blade downwards and leaves us in what Maya would describe as a position of advantage. The thrust comes in and we lift our hand covering the line. We bring it down to knee level or even slightly below. Notice also that we accompany this with a step off to the side just as we did with Absetzen so that we're not in the fencing line of the opponent. Of course, in reality, techniques are never quite as refined as they are in instructional videos. In this footage from a recent tournament, the opponent attacks low, and I use a slicing off action to the side to take their blade out of the equation, though I don't follow up quickly enough. So how can we follow up? The easiest way is simply to cut behind the opponent's blade 
through their body or their face. As we do so, we use a double triangle step as we did with Absetzen, and this double triangle step is exactly the same footstep pattern that we see marked out in Meyer's 1570 text for rapier. The key to this double stepping action is to make it continuous. As soon as the first foot has landed, we're immediately ready to move the other. This leads directly to our next type of parrying, which is suppressing or dempfen, and basically this is a vertical cut downwards as a percussive parrying action against their blade. So we lift and we cut down to our knee with our point in a higher position just as we did with slicing. In fact, this is closely related to slicing, the only difference being that this is a percussive vertical cutting action rather than that gentle subtle slicing action of the previous technique. And we can see that here, a lift and a beat downwards, ending in very much the same position as we did with slicing off. Once again, we can see this action, and we cut down along that vertical line of their right shoulder through the strong of their blade, and this gives us the final position we need to perform a follow-up attack. All of the other parts of this movement are very similar to slicing off as well, with that double triangle step and following up behind their blade. And so in some ways, this technique is simply a more aggressive version of the more subtle slicing off. In fact, so pervasive is this slicing off technique that our final version of parrying also uses it. This is the going through. In this technique, we drop our point and we go underneath in a circular action, and now we perform the slicing off on the right side behind our opponent's blade. So from the low guard, we drop our point, we bring it around, and then we slice off, bring the blade down once again to our knee level and putting ourselves in a position of advantage. This is clearer with an opponent. Our opponent cuts in, we go through, we slice off behind their blade, suppressing downwards just as we did before. The attack comes in, we go through, we slice off, and now you can see we're in the very same position as the slicing off, but on the right side of the opponent instead of the left. And given that we're in this position of advantage, we can follow up with a direct and immediate riposte, in this case using a thrust. We're still using triangle stepping in this technique, but in this case we're stepping out to our left instead of pivoting out to our right as we did in previous movements. In practice, this technique is very useful against people who attack with a series of feints. As they attack in with repeated feints, we can skip backwards either withdrawing the lead leg or retreating with both feet, and use that circularity to create a cone of protection which protects us effectively from most of the feints that they're performing. The same applies if the opponent attacks slightly short, as you can see in this video from a tournament. The opponent attacks slightly short, I skip backwards and use that circular action to beat aside their attack, cutting through the fort of the blade at the guard, and in this case unintentionally scoring. In this video we've looked at four of the parrying techniques which are described by Meyer in his side sword section. Setting aside or absetzen, which is simply a thrust in opposition, as well as slicing off, suppressing and going through. These final three are closely related techniques and all use a lifting of the hand and then a pressure downwards with the guard while keeping the point up and in presence to maintain our advantage. But at the start of this video we said there were eight types of parrying and we've only looked at four. If you want to see the remaining four types of parrying technique, then you'll have to wait until part two of this video, which will come out soon. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.